Well, it's a well-known and unfortunate fact that many families and relationships are victims of domestic violence. Their cases in their homes and in the month of October, uh, several organizations are getting the word out how we can combat domestic violence, but what are the rights of those who've actually suffered at the hands of domestic violence? Attorney and legal correspondent David Lesh is here to join us and share with us more. A big month in regards to domestic violence. Yes, uh, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, um, and we did a show last night on today's verdict, which was dedicated to um, helping those who are a victim find ways to soothe and um, somehow exit a very bad situation. You know, we had as two guests last night, we had a professor from St. John's Law School, Elaine Chu, uh, and we also had Liz Lasky from an organization um, that, was, that goes to different schools to help uh, teenagers try and cope um, when, the, you know, their boyfriends or um, family members have been abusing them in certain ways. So it was a very good show, and I thought maybe uh, today, um, considering I'm still doing a constitutional law series, I might be able to discuss a some of the issues that come up with respect to domestic violence. Um, one in particular is a registry um, that has been um, promoted uh, in terms of putting those who've been um, convicted of battering on an electronic national database so that others can look those people up and make sure that um, they know where they live and whether or not, you know, that they may want to get into a relationship with somebody to see if check them check up on the relationship to see if if um, if they've been convicted of battering. Uh, it brings up the constitutional law issue um, as to whether or not you're branding somebody for life once they've been convicted of of domestic violence. And we discussed this the law professor and I last night. So I um, hope the viewers will you know take a time to check into the and show. And what's the position here? Because you, obviously you've got some people on both sides, people saying, yes, you need to have this done. And then you got the other side that says, listen, you know, suffered the crime, did the time, and I don't need to be branded for life. Well, you know, it's, it's similar to Megan's law in you know, the child abuse um, a statute, whereby if you're convicted of child abuse, you end up on on this particular database so that if you're going to live, you know, in a, if, if you're going to live in a neighborhood, somebody has a right to know that there's somebody who's been convicted of child abuse. Almost every state um, has this type of law. But it's different when you're talking about a serial batterer or somebody who's been convicted of domestic violence. Um, many states do not want to, to create this type of registry. And you might say, well, well, why not? Wouldn't it be a good idea? Well, you know, I, I think we as a society seem to be giving much more attention to children who are abused than necessarily to women or men who are abused. And that's been changing. Um, whether maybe because it was a taboo subject for a while, you, did, you didn't really know, you know, who was, you know who was a victim or not. It was hush-hush. Neighbors didn't really report when they heard other things going on in, in their in homes. Um, so we kind of kept it very low. But now, you know, people are coming out and they're talking about it more. And the more they talk about it, the more we see that it's very prevalent. Um, so I think states are starting to introduce bills to protect women from serial batterers. Uh, and, but then you also have the right of the batterer or the person who's ab abused somebody and, you know, their right to be able to get a job and date in the future. So, you know, it's, a, it's always, a, in constitutional law, it's always the same issues. Let's talk about rights for victims. What kind of rights do victims have? Well, if you feel that, that you were in an abusive relationship, um, you can always go and seek an order of protection. Uh, you go to the family court and you fill out a petition. Um, you basically list whatever it is that you feel the abuse consists of. You have to be very specific. Then you take the order of protection and you serve it uh, on your domestic partner or on whoever else is doing the abusing. Um, you can get a restraining order, but as you've seen in the news, many times these restraining orders don't do very much, and if the abuser really wants to take revenge, the abuser can take revenge. Um, that's why this electronic database might be such a good idea, uh, because it, it, it prevents you from getting in, involved with somebody who you know has a history of battering other women. And apparently, statistically, Many batterers are serial batterers. And the reason why we know this is once the, di the district attorney starts prosecuting a batterer, they find out that the person had done this to other women because now the district attorney is lining up all the witnesses, and it turns out it's a previous girlfriend, a previous wife. In other words, somebody has done this once, they've done it again and again and again. So if we create a database, we'll know 
um, that you should be looking at this person twice before dating them or getting involved in a relationship with them. And if it's national, you can't go from state to state to try and hide. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But again, it's, it's the rights of, of, of the individual in constitutional law against the rights of society, which has an interest. These two now, interests... You, now, where do things stand right now? Well, right now, it, uh, again, and the professor last night, she, you know, she has said that the states are still... Um, it's in the early stages of putting this f through. Um, I asked her whether or not she thinks it's going to happen in New York, and she said, well, not yet, but I think it's going to get there. Um, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those, those issues that, that's slowly rising. Mm -hmm. Five years, maybe 10 years, I'm not quite sure. It, it depends on, on what society feels. Look, you know, we have like gay marriage. It took a while for that to get there. You know, it takes a while for issues um, to really reach the public so we really feel it's important. And I think that's why dedicating an entire month, October, to domestic violence awareness, um, it brings it to everyone's attention. You know, people who are watching today might be um, a victim of domestic violence. And if they are there, are, there are certainly services they can go to. There was a woman who was on the show le uh, yesterday. Her name is uh, Liz Lasky. She's from the Relationship Abuse Prevention Center. Um, and you can look her up, uh, or you can look up the, um, the abuse prevention coordinator um, at the center and certainly make an appointment and go there. Um, what she told me she does for the, for the organization is she travels to different schools. Mm -hmm. And she meets with teenagers who are very vulnerable. Um, they get involved with re in relationships at school. And they don't know who to turn to. They don't want to turn to their parents because they don't want their parents to know that they're involved in a relationship at school, uh, an abusive relationship. And the, rela and the abuse doesn't have to necessarily be phys physical abuse. It could be emotional abuse. Somebody could you know, take your, your cell phone and then start going through your contacts and start telling other people that you've been dating or, you know, dating or doing other things that you really haven't been doing, that's still considered to be domestic violence. Okay? It doesn't have to be physical abuse. Uh, and I think teenagers really have no one to turn to. Um, so these organizations that go to the schools and they sit there with a teenager and say, look, tell me, what, tell me what's been going on here. Your grades are, are, you know, are slipping. Um, you're very withdrawn. You're not talking to others. The guidance counselor says that you've been missing classes. You'll find out many times that the teenagers are involved in, in a dangerous Domestic relationship. And it's not just women. Mm -hmm. It's men as well, um, or boys, should we say. And, you know, a lot of, you know, it's a taboo subject that is now something that we're discussing. Um, and I think it's very important that, you know, that people understand um, that domestic violence is real. Um, and what used to be in the back, um, you know, in behind closed doors, is not that way anymore, and I think it's very important that people know that there are um, places to turn. Um, from a constitutional law perspective, and that's really why I'm here many times discussing these legal issues, um, I always tr try and balance individuals' rights against, you know, the rights of society, and I hate for somebody to be branded uh, a batterer for life. Um, like, look what happened with, you know, the, um, the singer who, uh, who, um, Chris Brown. Chris Brown, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody sees him a a as somebody who committed domestic violence. Right. right. And no matter what he does and how he tries to explain it away, I mean, that's how he is viewed now. He's pretty much branded. Doesn't hasn't necessarily hurt his career that badly. He seems to be doing okay. Um, but I'm sure that will follow him. Unfortunately, he makes you know he makes good money and he's able to still yeah, do it. But, but that's, that's not everybody's story. That's not everyone's story. And if you're branded a batterer and you get on a, on a registry. That's it for life. Now, somebody might say, well, you deserve to be on that registry if you've done this to somebody. But there are a lot of crimes that people commit all the, all, all the time, and they don't end up on a registry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting constitutional law issue, and it's not the last we've heard of it. And my guess is in the next three to five years, we will, there will be some bills that will be introduced into the legislature. This will be debated, um, and we'll see where, uh, where it goes. We'll continue to follow it, and we'll continue to follow your constitutional law series. When's the new sh uh, When's the new show airing? Well, we, well, the new show was was uh, last night, but it's you know it's every Tuesday at six thirty, and I'm sure they show it over on on Bronxnet. And uh, we have some very interesting uh, legal issues coming up in the next month. All right, David Lesh, our attorney and legal correspondent, and thank you for joining us. My